this program since about 1990. We've been doing this program that long. Okay. So some of those trees have been tapped every year that long. You can see, like I didn't tap this tree. It has been tapped by a, a yellow belly factor. You can see that? That's where a, a woodpecker that drinks sap did that. That one was probably two years ago. That one's from last year. Sometimes you'll see a row of holes and you'll see the sap running down. The little woodpeckers did that. And you just see that little, little plug of scar tissue in there. I don't. Right. They eat the bugs that get caught or attracted to the sap. Exactly right. Is that a sherb right there? That's just water. I don't have enough sap. The only sap I have left, I have only a... Yesterday I gathered about 10 gallons of sap and I put it in the evaporator. So that really is sap in there. This is just a little container. You evaporate it and then you cook it down? You cook it. You cook it hot enough to make it steam. Do you, look at the, do you see that machine up there? See the steam coming up? That thing's called an evaporator. You want to go over there? That's how you get rid of all the water. Okay. It's 40 to 1. See all those 40 gallon jugs hanging there? That's to show you the ratio. 40 gallons of sap to make 1 gallon of syrup. That's an average. How long does it take in the evaporator? I know you about 24 hours. Okay. Yeah. To make a bath. It's pretty cool. Tomorrow night. Careful, it's hot. Maybe. Huh. No, I didn't. of maple sap to make one gallon of maple syrup. So it takes a lot of boiling to get rid of that excess water. And so we're going to have to harvest to make a gallon of maple syrup. <laughs> 30 to 40 gallons, maybe a little more than that. The earlier, sap, the earlier sap, the less it takes to make a gallon of syrup. You get that the season, it takes more. So you may start out getting by with 30 gallons. By the time you're done, you may be approaching 50. So it's very labor intensive. In addition to maintaining the fire, keeping the boiling, we're all going to have to have somebody collect the firewood as well. And that's where a lot of the youngsters would have came into play. As soon as they're big enough, they're going to be hauling keelers up here. You know, they're going to be walking the, the, uh, the sap line. Bring these keelers in so we can keep that kettle to They're going to be collecting every piece of dead wood. I wouldn't have had the luxury of having pre-cut firewood. All the dead wood here would have been gathered in so we can keep this fire hot enough, especially earlier on during the boiling. We would want that for warm boil. And as the sap started to condense into sap and, and, the, and the, the water evaporated out of that, I let my fire build down a little bit and then we would assume it's kind of like what, what we're bringing down. Some of the things we would use maple syrup for today, you know, we just think of maple syrup as something cool to put on pancakes. But maple sugar would have been used for everything. They didn't have refined sugar like they know it today. Cane sugar was available you know, in the southern colonies and it could have been imported from the Caribbean, but not like they have here because of the distance. It would have been very expensive. Even if we could have got it out here, we probably couldn't have afforded it. So what do they do with what we have? And we would make syrup out of that. We would let that syrup dry and it would harvest it. Sometimes we would use that as a treat for the children, so they certainly couldn't get a Walmart and get a Reese's Peanut Butter. So we would have had hard to make candy that we wanted to put on. Um, anytime you would use the 
today, anytime you use uh, yeah. spinach or refined sugar, mm -hmm. oh. or cooking or whatever mm -hmm. reason, we'll replace that with potato. Not only will we boil sap down in this, that may have been a pot we picked out of, that may have been a pot that we, we boiled corn syrup into the corn liquor, because that was the easiest, easiest way to transport the corn down the high river. We took it down in the corn liquor and traded it down at the New Orleans for finished goods. So that would have had a double, would have had a double use. Everybody familiar with the term cabin fever? Everybody <laughs> have that this term? <laughs> okay. All right, now imagine you're in a cold, drafty cabin. No television to watch, no video games to play. You're in a 12 by 20 cabin or a 16 by 20 cabin with seven or eight kids. Parents got a whole different on that. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as it starts working, we want to get out. So not only was this essential as far as us getting by day-to-day -day life, it gives us something to, to sweeten our food with. If we're really lucky we get enough we can barter for some finished items. Then I got a chance to see my neighbor that lived over on the other ridge. I mean, if you had a farm, you didn't have 20 acres. You had several hundred. More than likely. So you, know, you travel, you get a chance to talk to him and see if all his children made it through the winter. And then they die with the flu or the, or the fox. And you know, they've seen any Indian song. You know, what's the chance of attack? Maybe you'll talk about the weather. Well, we're enjoying a deal of spring this year. This was the 18th century, and we were farmers. We'd be very concerned about the lack of rain. What's that going to do to our crop? So it kind of gave you a chance for, for a social gap. Before we got into the very intensive farming, which, which most everybody did, this was just a part of it. We would collect maple syrup in the spring. We would farm, you know, later spring, or early summer, winter. If we had an opportunity, we would we would go hunting. That's the most I brought my farm on rifle with me today. And times of strife or Indian hostilities, you know, maybe one or two folks would have been standing guard while while the children and the women did most of the work. Um, if I'm real lucky, I might get a spring gobbler this year. I might be able to shoot a turkey while I'm out here, a deer, and I can bring it back to my wife. And clean and skin that and get it ready because everybody knows in the 1700s a woman didn't work fit let's shoot the clean animals. <laughs> didn't happen. What else we brought them out here? Unless we're going to work and bear our children. And stuff. I thought you weren't allowed to shoot here in the springtime. Well, there wasn't any, there wasn't any, any hunting regulations back then. In fact, the majority of your market hunters, now there were folks, and very few of them, but there were folks that made a living with their rifle. Either harvesting game to supply British garrisons and forests on the higher frontier. Or leather. There was a huge market for deer leather back in Europe. I mean, everybody heard the term buck. That's what that started from was a buck skin. And the actual hide was there. I'm getting off topic here, but it's a teachable moment. <laughs> uh, the hides were actually thicker in the summer. Yeah, it looks like it. They call them the, the red deer, the Virginia red deer. Uh, and then as winter came on, the hides would get thinner, but the fur would thick. Those hides weren't worth the barn for leather. They didn't, they didn't want winter hides, they wanted summer hides. They were thicker, so a lot of deer would be harvested in the summertime as well. And if you're feeding your family, even even today, if they got real hard, I'm not worried about breaking a game wall just between putting food on, on the table for my family or going there. So that is a good question. There were, there were no seasons. There no honey. Open, open season, you know. In addition to farming, you know, hogs would have been brought in, so they're easy to raise. So hog and hominy would have, would have been a hog and hominy punch and dinner a lot. That was another, another part of the one. So about how often do they eat meat? So it's like every meal. Every meal. Every meal. Yeah, every meal because yeah. In addition, like I said, the hogs were lucky to have cattle. A lot of wild game. Deer, turkey, um, especially earlier on there, there were bison, uh, elk. There was a huge, wide variety of games that we ever had. Uh, one of the luxuries that we didn't have would have been salt. You know, you would have had to travel to the salt with the winter salt. which would have been another thing that cattle would have been used to. But uh, that's kind of how maple syrup would have played into this. Like if we're lucky, maybe we would have had enough to barter for, for other goods. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? Okay. No other questions? Um, Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.